Namaste. So let's continue with Aparokshanubhutihi, the step-by-step -step method to realize Brahman. The next series of verses, starting with verse 59, is a long series of similes comparing various things to Brahman. So, first I think we should look into what is a simile. Simile, noun, comparing or likening two things having some strong point or points of resemblance, both of which are mentioned and the comparison directly stated. A poetic or imaginative comparison. Also, the verbal expression or embodiment of such a comparison. So let's take a very simple simile. You've all taken algebra, hopefully, in high school. And here's a very simple equation. 75 over 100 equals 3 over x. So here we have two things compared with one another, 75 and 100. And we're saying that this comparison is identical to 3 over x. So just in case you, you're not too intuitive about math, the solution is 3 over 4. Then it's obvious, right? 75 over 100 is the same ratio as 3 to 4. So another way to say this is 75 is to 100 just as 3 is to 4. So now let's take a look at the first simile from Aparokshana Bhuti. Just as after the illusion has gone, one is no longer deluded to see a jar in earth or silver in the nakre. So does one no more see jiva in Brahman when the latter is realized as one's own self. So here we have a simile, actually two similes, between the jar in the earth and silver in nakre. And this is compared to the jiva and Brahman. So let's put that in the same format as the equation. Nakre is to silver just as jiva is to Brahman. And similarly, a jar is to earth just as jiva is to Brahman. So Maybe you don't know what Nakre is. It's known as Mother of Pearl. And it's the silvery coating on the inside of a shell, a conch shell or other kind of shell, that eventually grows into a pearl under certain circumstances. So this is called Nakre. It kind of looks silvery, and so some people might mistake it for silver if they saw it maybe apart from a shell or something. But anyway, there really is no silver in Nakre. It's just an appearance of silver. So in the same way, or in a similar way, there really is no jiva, no individual soul, no individual consciousness or being in Brahman. So this is a simile. Look at it again. Nakre is to silver just as jiva is to Brahman. And similarly, a jar is to earth just as jiva is to Brahman. Now here, a different thing is being compared. We're not saying now, we're not looking at the fact that it's an illusion that there's silver in Nakre. Now, the jar 
is simply a temporary form of its origin material, earth. You take earth and you wet it and you make it into clay, put it on a wheel, turn it, make it into a jar. So just as the jar is to earth, the jiva is to Brahman. Earth is the only ingredient in a jar. So if you think a jar is different from the earth, you're deluded. If you think it's separate from earth, that's wrong. The jar is nothing but earth cast into a certain form. And when the jar is broken, then again, it goes back to the earth. Maybe some of you, if you haven't lived in India, you haven't seen earthen pottery. Earthenware is basically ba very lightly baked. It's unglazed earthenware, plain earth. And of course, these aren't very strong. They don't last very long. When they do break, people just throw them on a pile in the garden and let rain and nature do its thing and absorb them back into the earth again. So this is a very common down-home example that he gives to show that the jiva and Brahman are related in a similar way. What we perceive as or what we experience as the jiva, the individual, the conscious being, is actually nothing but Brahman, just cast into a different form. And because we get all hung up on the form, we miss the fact that the only ingredient in jiva is Brahman. So this is illusion. And to dispel the illusion, he's making a simile to say, you see, just as the earth is to the jar, Brahman is to jiva, or it may be the other way around. Just as the jar is to the earth, the jiva is to Brahman. Brahman is the ingredient, jiva is the product. And when the jiva is finished, like when the pot is broken, it simply goes back into Brahman, simply merges with Brahman again. This is what we're after. This enlightenment is when the jar is broken, when the artificial container called Jiva is no more, when it loses its form, the body, the mind, and it's reabsorbed into its ingredient, Brahman. So, I want to look at the next verse and then ask you some questions so that you can answer in the comments of this video. This is a new form of presentation that Richard suggested and I'm experimenting with it. Just as earth is described as a jar, gold as an earring, and anakre as silver, so is Brahman described as jiva. So now I want to ask you, what are the similar properties? Remember, a simile is a statement of similar properties between different things, which are then compared to another thing. So there are three here, earth and the jar, gold and an earring, and the jiva and Brahman. What is the similarity between these three similes? Please answer in the comments. Winner gets a prize. <laughs> I don't know. Just uh, give your best description. Give your best answer in the comments below. 
So now I want to talk about a simile, and especially these similes in relation to Brahman, in terms of superimposition. See, what we're doing in a simile is that we are superimposing a relationship between these two things upon the relationship of these other two things, which may or may not be related. For example, we're taking the simile of the jar and the earth. The jar is the product, the earth is the ingredient. Similarly, the earring is the product, the gold is the ingredient. And so there's a similarity between them and the comparison of the jiva to Brahman. What is it? It's that Brahman is also the ingredient, the sole ingredient of the jiva. Isn't it? So this is why the simile is valid. This is why it makes sense. Because there are these points of similarity. The word simile comes from the word similar. So what is similar about this relationship also applies to this other relationship. And that allows us to solve the equation. Huh? The jar is to earth, just as the jiva is to Brahman. So now, after this video, we're going to be going through a whole series of other similes related to Brahman. And I'm going to be asking similar questions. Uh, and uh, I don't know, maybe we can arrange a prize, uh, like uh, free video consultation or something like that. Let me know in the comments what you think would be a fair prize for getting it right. And uh, then in the next few verses, or next few videos, we're going to try to cover these verses. There's a lot of them. And each one shows a specific quality, a specific uh, relationship that Brahman has with various things. And in this way, it is trying to point out what is Brahman. Brahman is the ingredient of the jiva. Now we know. See, just like the silver is the ingredient or seems to be the quality of the nakre. So Brahman also seems to be the quality of the jiva. The jiva seems to be conscious, but it's actually not because it's an illusion. So the consciousness, the actual consciousness is Brahman. It's simply reflected in the mind and body, as we went over in the, the series on Drikdrishya Viveka. So this is to help us wake up from the illusion and reach the truth. And when we actually reach the truth, then that is enlightenment. Om Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.